Hello everybody, welcome back. I have a super fun project for you today. Today we're gonna do the instructional video tutorial for the chicken mug rug slash trivet. Isn't she so cute? I plan on making several of these and using these as trivets uh, at Thanksgiving when the kids come, uh, have all different colored ones to set our casseroles and all of our stuff on for Thanksgiving. Uh, but isn't she just so dang cute? Look at her little feet. <laughs> now I'm going to walk you through in this video how to make her and uh, it's super easy and once you make one I think you will get really fast at them and be able to make a whole bunch if you wanted to. These are great for yourself. These are great for gifts for friends and family. You could even if you have a craft booth or you set up at consignment shops uh, farmers markets. I think that these would do really well. People love chickens. Actually, I feel like most of the people I talk to, you either really love chickens or you grew up with chickens and now you can't stand chickens. <laughs> like I have found it's kind of in the middle. But I think these would do really well if you have a booth at a farmer's market, right? You could make a whole bunch of them. Today, I'm going to walk you through that tutorial, but before we get started, and if you're watching this and you're like, oh, I don't care about your chickens, Lisa, <laughs> you can fast forward to where we get started on this project, right? But many of you have been following along in my videos, and uh, you know that we recently moved to what I call the country, right? And we moved from the city. It certainly wasn't New York City or like Chicago or any of those great big cities, but it was definitely way more hustle and bustle where we lived versus where we live now. And things just seem more quiet, more laid back. And even though I feel like we've taken on more responsibility, things just seem a lot slower here. And we absolutely love it. But we have gotten chickens. Actually... Harlan got chickens. <laughs> Harlan wanted the chickens. And if truth be told, I did not. But instantly I fell in love with them. And I immediately refer to them as my babies. And they love being called that. And that's what they are. They are our babies at, with benefits, right? They uh, have started producing eggs for us. And we just love them. They're a lot of work. They're a mess, but we love them. So many of you who have been following along have asked for chicken updates, and um, I'm just going to start posting right now uh, while I'm talking some random videos that I took about a week ago. And these are our babies. We have two roosters, and uh, we have gone through, this has been quite a learning journey for us. Um, I'm pretty sure Harlan had chickens growing up as a kid, but his adult life he has not. And uh, I, I have never had chickens. And uh, so this is definitely all new for me. And uh, But we absolutely love them. So it all started with Rudy. He's the biggest rooster that you might see in these videos. He was actually our neighbors, but he showed up in our yard one day. And he would come over during the day and at night he would disappear and one evening Harlan followed him back to where he was going and he belonged to our neighbor. Come to find out our neighbor had two roosters. The other rooster was quite larger than Rudy and Rudy was looking for a new home I reckon. He was taking it upon himself to rehome himself. And anyway we had a conversation with our neighbor and he said we could have Rudy. And that's where it all started. And from there we got uh, several babies. And uh, we thought that they were all hens, but it turns out that Braveheart is not a hen. And he is our second rooster. And uh, we've been to a couple of uh, chicken swaps and uh, acquired a couple more chickens and we've been to a couple of chicken farms and acquired a chicken or two so our flock has grown and you'll see our little babies at some point in 
these little videos here. Um, they don't even look like that. When we got them, they were super, super tiny. They were only like maybe a week old. Yeah, maybe a week old. And they were super small. If you follow me on Facebook, you might have seen pictures of them, right? And as of a week ago when I took this video, uh, they don't even look like this anymore. They are probably double the size that you see now. They grow so fast. They're like our babies, right? They just grow so fast. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there are our chickens and we are absolutely loving it. And I would say this whole lifestyle for us is totally different. <clears throat> While we might not have the greatest and fastest and bestest internet like we had in the city, <laughs> uh, so many other things have well made up for it. We are uh, getting a garden ready for the spring. We are learning how to can. We have a freeze dryer. We have planted some fruit trees. And uh, yeah, we are just, um, it just feels like everything is almost completely different. But not. <laughs> right? Okay, that is my chicken update. There are chickens, and I promise that I will give y'all more frequent updates. I know some of you could care less, and I get it. It's okay. It's fine, but some of you are really interested, and so I will do more chicken updates uh, as we go along. Okay, are you ready to get started? I have all my stuff ready, and we're going to go down to the cutting mat. We have some prep work to do with um, some of the papers in this pattern, and just to let you know, this pattern is in my Etsy shop. It is $4.00. You get the PDF with all of the templates that I'm going to use today. You get a cutting file if you have a cutting machine like a Cricut or a Scan and Cut. And you want to cut out the applique portions of this project really quickly. You get that. And um, there is written instructions. But if you're like me, I learn more from watching someone make it versus reading through the instructions. And I'm just going to be really honest. Sometimes I write instructions and it just all sounds so confusing. <laughs> so I'm going to walk you through the project and you might find it easier just to watch this. And then you can just forego all the written stuff, right? But the written instructions are there for those who learn better reading. Hopefully I didn't make it too confusing. But there is the PDF for that, right? Okay, let's go down and let's prep this paper template for the base of the mug rug, right? Because she is on a base. And with this project, you can choose to use one or two layers of batting. And with this one, I used two layers of warm and natural batting, right? And uh, you could even use Insulbrite if you prefer to do your trivets or hot pads that way. You could absolutely swap out the batting in this project for that. I just always go with what I have plenty on hand and I've always have scraps of batting. So I used a double layer and she's got a good body. See, she is a little bit stiffer than if you would have used one layer of batting. If you're doing a mug rug, I think one layer would be perfectly fine, right? And uh, she would be a little bit softer and more quilty like too. So we're going to come down to the cutting mat and prep the base part of this pattern. And that's what we're going to do first. In the PDF, you're going to find uh, two pages that have uh, boxes like this. This is what they're going to look like. And you're going to cut out the boxes just like you see here, right? And then you're going to separate them into four pieces. Now these boxes also have a little tab so that you can glue them together. So I'm going to walk you through uh, trimming away and gluing these four pieces into one template. I'm just using my paper rotary cutter today to do that, but you could use scissors, right? And I like to use glue. You could use a glue stick. Um, but we're just going to put these four pieces together to create the template for the base. Okay. 
they're situated just like that and so you should have the shape of the chicken just like that And once your four pieces are all put together just like this, you're going to cut out your chicken shape right on the outside black line. So let me do that and we'll be right back. Here is our chicken shape all cut out right on that outside line. The next thing we're going to do to prep this piece is you're going to see a red line right in the middle of your chicken. You can use a pair of scissors, but I find it a lot easier just to use a seam ripper, right? What we wanna do is cut a slit right where that red line is. So I just poke a hole right in my paper and just run that seam ripper right through the paper, creating that opening, right? Just a slit right there. What we're gonna do with that little slit is use that as the opening for turning our project right side out once we get to that part. So when we're sewing, we're not gonna leave an opening anywhere along the outside of this uh, shape. And that's gonna make it so that we don't have any hand sewing or machine sewing to close an opening when we get to that part. So just cut yourself a little slit right there. Now on the first page of the PDF, you're gonna find all the measurements for all of your fabrics to pre-cut, right? So I have the two fabrics for the base of my project and I've placed them right sides together. Now you could do this one of two different ways, right? You could layer your project with your batting or insole braid and your base fabrics. Swipe this a couple times with a glue stick, right? Just to get it to stick in place. Put it right on there and bring this to the sewing machine and with a very, very small stitch length, you could stitch right on that orange line all the way around. So if you prefer not to trace the outside shape and just get right to sewing, you could absolutely do that. That orange line is your stitch line. The only downside to that is if you wanted to make multiples of this project, you would have to print off multiples of the two pages that make up this template and go through putting together multiple templates because once you sew on that orange line, you're going to have to tear this off of your project, kind of like paper piecing, right? But if you're someone who um, prefers to have like a definite sewing line marked for you, you could do it that way. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a pin and on the fabric that I want, both of my fabrics are the same. Maybe you choose two different fabrics. That's totally up to you, right? But on the fabric that you want to be the front of your project, this is the side that you're going to uh, mark the template. And all I'm going to do is just take a pin and go right around the edge of this. Let's find a pin that works. <laughs> I'm just going right around the edge. Can I not find a pin that works today? There we go. And I'm just tracing this shape right onto the back side of this fabric. Now once you've traced the line all the way around, don't forget to take your pin and right inside that slit, we're just marking where we're going to cut to create the opening for the base. Just like that. So when you remove the paper template, you should have a good outline to go by. This part is a little faded. Hold on. There we go. <laughs> right? And so now, if you do it this way, you can reuse this template hundreds of times, right? 
So we have our two fabrics for the base of the mug rug. Now I'm gonna bring in two layers of warm and natural batting. You could use one layer. You could swap this out for Insel Bright. I'm just gonna put the fabric right on top of everything. And you might find it helpful to go ahead and either uh, pin baste this uh, so that these four layers don't shift around while you're sewing, right? Or maybe you like using the little uh, clips, right? Like binding clips. You could certainly use those as well. But I'm just going to throw a couple pins here and there just to keep all of these layers in place as we sew all the way around. And let's just add one more. There we go. We just really want to keep everything in place. That's all. So we're going to bring this over to the sewing machine next. And what we're going to do is use this as our guide. We have our sewing machine set at a quarter inch seam allowance, right? So let's move over there. All right, today I'm going to be using an open toe foot so that hopefully you can see a little bit easier uh, exactly what I'm doing. But I'm using the traced line that we did as my guide. And that's just going to stay on the right side of my seam or my presser foot, right? And we have the quarter inch seam set. Today I'm using a stitch length of 2.0. And a Depending on the thread you're using, the fabrics or the batting or the insole bright you're using, you might need to adjust your stitch uh, length a little bit longer. Uh, but I do like to have the stitch length as close as possible without really causing uh, any jams with my stitches, right? I want it to stitch nice and neat and close as possible. You might have to increase your stitch length according to your materials right so we're gonna go ahead and just stitch all the way around you'll see that I'm not gonna back stitch when I start but when I come all the way back around when I get to where I started I'm gonna pass that and then I'll do a back stitch right there okay So now we've sewn all the way around our shape. We're gonna go back to the cutting mat. We're gonna trim away all the extra fabric, leaving a really small, uh, just a little small seam allowance all the way around, probably even smaller than that drawn line. Okay, we can just take these pins out. If you have a, a pair of pinking shears, you could absolutely use those too. Uh, I'm just gonna use some scissors and I'm just gonna trim all the way around. All right, and there's some little curvy parts right in that tail area. I just like to <clears throat> cut a couple little slits, just being careful and mindful not to cut that uh, stitch line but this will help give you a cleaner little uh, transition right in these curved areas. There you go. Now we have that little slit. That's what we're gonna use to flip everything right side out. So you're gonna very carefully, sometimes it's a little tricky, you're gonna separate the layers 
And if you feel it, you can almost feel that it's just a single layer of fabric and you're gonna pull it apart. And over here, you have your layers of batting and the back of your project, right? And I'm just going to cut a little slit. Let's use the seam ripper. I think that's a little bit safer for me. <laughs> just gonna poke it through. Poke it through. Just a single layer of fabric and cut that slit. There we go. So just peeking on the inside, you can see the back and we're gonna flip everything right through that little opening. You might find it helpful to have a hemostat, right? So you can just reach right in and grab it and then start turning. <laughs> that might be helpful for you. <laughs> Maybe not. Once you've turned the shape all the way out and pressed out all your seams, I just like to use like a chopstick or a pokey tool, right? And pressed all of that seam right along the edge out. You can take your iron and just give her a good little press. And there we go. So you'll see the slit is on the front of the base and the back is nice and finished and there's no tricky opening along the edge that we have to deal with at this point. So the base is done and now we're ready to go ahead and prep uh, the comb, the beak, and the little waddle. So, and the feet. Okay, so let's talk about the feet for a second. You're gonna see the little tracing templates. Let me find them. I tried to sew the feet in the same manner that I'm gonna show you for the other parts. And the feet, for me, were dang near impossible to turn them right side out. Now, you might uh, love and have great success at turning parts right side out, right? Uh, but it was taking me forever and I was just struggling with it. So you have a couple of options. You can make the feet the same exact way I'm going to make these three parts. Or you can just use a piece of felt. Now I do have some wool felt, but I'm saving that for a special project. So I have a piece of crafting felt, right? And this is what I used uh, to cut out my shapes and we'll talk about that more here in a second but for this part you're going to need this page and we're just going to cut this page right on that dotted line and we are prepping all of the pieces one through five okay so um get this page Pre-cut your fabrics for this page. They're all on page number one. And at this point, you can go ahead and cut these shapes out directly on the black line and um, do that for the feet as well if you're making them the way you're making pieces three, four, and five. If you want to use the felt, a single layer of felt for the feet like I did, what I would do is just separate this, right? And don't worry about cutting them out. And I'm gonna show you the method 
uh, with the felt. So separate these two pieces and put them off to the side and then cut pieces three, four, and five out directly on the line. Okay, for pieces uh, three, four, and five, we have two fabrics for each one of these pieces, right? You're gonna notice on the paper template that there's a red, little red line on each one of these. That red line is the side that we're gonna leave completely open so that we can turn these pieces right side out. So for each one of these groups of fabric, you're gonna place them right sides together, just like that. And we're gonna bring these to the sewing machine with a very short stitch length, right? And we're gonna stitch uh, all the way around, making sure to leave the side open with the red line. And when we start and stop, we're gonna do a couple of little back stitches to lock these seams in place so they don't open up as we're turning them right side out. So let's come on over to the sewing machine and we're gonna stitch these three pieces. All right, let's start with piece number three. I'm using a stitch length of 1.6. You might need to experiment with your stitch length, but you want it kind of really close together, right? We're gonna just, I'm just laying this paper template right in place like that, right? And with a little pressure with my finger, I can keep it in place. We're just going right along the outside, right next to the paper. So there's our shape and you'll see that this paper just lifts right off. There's our shape, there is our opening. We're gonna trim all the extra fabric off here in just a second, but I'm gonna bring over the other pieces and stitch them with you as well. So we have piece three or four and five and you might find it helpful to put just a smidgen of glue stick on the back side of your piece, just to keep it in place as you're stitching all the way around. And your pieces will still lift right off. It just helps keep it in place as you're sewing. So here are our pieces three, four, and five, and that should just lift right off, even using the glue stick. Now these pieces, I would just put in a little paper baggie, so the next time you wanna make this, you don't have to go through prepping the pieces anymore. You can just save them just like that. And then we're just going to remove all the extra fabric, right? So I'm gonna go around and just leave a very small little uh, uh, seam allowance. And the side of the opening, I, without cutting the stitches, I'm just gonna cut uh, a section off just like that and you'll, you'll see me go through and cut. All right, here's my little pieces. And again, the hemostat might come in really handy. We're gonna reach right in and turn each one of these pieces right side out. Okay, we have each one of these three pieces turned and I 
You saw me poke out all the seams the best that I could. And now I'm just gonna go through and press each one of these as soon as my iron heats up. Miss a spot. <laughs> there we go. A good close stitch length is gonna give you some really nice curved sections, right? So now I just like to press them and sometimes I like to just use a little bit of steam. Just makes them super duper flat. There we go. All right, those pieces are done. We're gonna set those aside and let's revisit the feet, okay? So because I'm using felt for mine, you could absolutely, the same method that I just did for three, four, and five, you could do that for the feet. Sometimes you see me struggle to turn things right side out. You should have seen me try to do the feet that way. It was not fun for me. <laughs> and this is way easier for me. So I'm just gonna use a single layer of felt for each one of the feet. I have my template here. And what I like to do is to grab just a scrap piece of freezer paper. This is the same freezer paper that you'd use in your kitchen, right? It's dull on one side and shiny on the other. The shiny bit is like a plastic coating that when you heat it up, it's gonna stick to fabric or felt, things like that. So what I did is I just traced parts one and two on the dull side of my freezer paper. I'm gonna trim off a little bit of this extra bit. And because I'm using a synthetic felt, right? This is not a wool felt, it's just like a crafting felt. I'm gonna be very mindful because I don't want to apply too much heat to this, but we do want to fuse the freezer paper onto the felt. So I'm just gonna swipe ever so slightly with my iron. You, If you're doing this, you might want to just lower the temp of your iron to a synthetic or let's see. Actually, this iron doesn't have like a synthetic setting. <laughs> I would lower it to a very low setting on your iron. If your iron has a synthetic uh, setting, that's what I would choose. You just don't want to melt your felt, right? But it only takes a little bit of heat to adhere that freezer paper right onto your felt. And once it's on there, you can cut out your feet directly on the traced line, right? So I'm gonna go do that and we'll come right back. Okay, here's my little feetsies, one and two. And after you cut them out, you can just lift that freezer paper right off. And there is your foot number one and your foot number two. So that's the super duper easy way to cut out the feet uh, for my project. And yeah, if you might find that helpful, I dare say that this project would be super cute if you just omitted the feet altogether and just had the hen, right? With the other parts, if you didn't wanna do the feet, right? It could just be like she's just sitting and you could leave the feet off totally if you wanted. But that's the super duper easy way to do the feet. So there are pieces one, two, three, four, and five, right? We're gonna set those aside. And all we have left to prep now is the applique portion, right? So the applique portion is the inside chicken shape, the wing, and the little patch on her tail, right? The little heart shape. So you're gonna find those templates and these are pieces six, seven, eight, and nine. So the eye, you could cut out a fabric. There is the shape there for it. That's piece number nine. Or you could use something like a button like what I've done on this one. Totally up to you, just a couple of different options. So 
These templates have been mirror imaged, so if you're using your favorite fusible, you'll just want to follow the instructions for your fusible for tracing and cutting and all that stuff. But you're going to want to prep your applique pieces for six, seven, eight, and nine. I'm going to use my scan and cut. I'm going to go get those pieces prepped and cut, and we're going to come back when we're ready to fuse everything together. Alrighty, here comes the most exciting part of this whole project. We have all of our parts made, right? So we have the base of our chicken. We have all of these parts. And I have just finished cutting out the applique portion. Uh, so the big chicken, the wing. I did cut my eye from fabric this time. And here's my little heart, right? So I just want you to note that on the tracing template for this piece, piece number six, you're going to see some grayed in areas, some shaded areas, and that's the approximate placement guide for each one of these pieces right here, right? So um, if you need like some assistance in placing all of these parts, that is shaded in. It is going to be like a mirror image, <laughs> right? But uh, if you needed, you could hold it up to the light and trace on the back side, and that could be helpful for you. I'm just gonna eyeball everything. Okay, so we're gonna put the heart patch, the wing and the eye off to the side for a minute. And we're just gonna be working with um, the body of the chicken. Uh, it has my heat and light on the back side of the fabric, right? And we're just going to place it like so. But I'm not going to fuse anything down yet, right? I have the feet that are going to come here at the bottom. I have the beak and the wattle that go like this. And the comb that goes up at the top. So these pieces are going to be inserted underneath of this part and right in the middle between this and the base. Okay, so we're just going to place that like that. And if you want, so it doesn't keep moving around, you could go ahead and just fuse it little bits at a time, right? Just apply a little bit of heat right there just to keep that in place. And then lift this up. And we're going to put the beak and her little waddle just like this. And I'll go ahead and apply a little bit of heat there so that doesn't move. And then her feet are going to go in right down here. Isn't that going to be super cute? Now, once we have the feet in place, we can go ahead and fuse this whole layer. So that's going to cover up the opening right underneath of her body, right? Okay, we're going to put her heart patch right on her tail like that. We have her wing coming in something like that and her eye. She's going to be adorable, <laughs> right? So I'm just going to fuse those pieces in place. Now I have a brown thread in both the top and my bobbin. And all that we have left now to do is to stitch down this applique, the, the eye, the body, the wing, and the heart patch. And as we do that, it's going to quilt our mug rug or our trivet, right? 
It's also going to permanently keep all of these parts in place. And it's just going to seal that opening underneath of this piece permanently. There we go. Now you could use all kinds of stitches in your sewing machine, right? You could use a zigzag stitch. Um, you're going through quite a few uh, layers. Even if you only did one layer of batting in this project, when you get up around these pieces, you're still going through quite a few layers. So a satin stitch probably would not be recommended for stitching at least the outer portion of the body. You could probably do the wing and the heart with a satin stitch. Uh, but I think today I'm going to choose a blanket stitch. It's one of my favorites and uh, it kind of looks like a hand stitch, although my hand stitch would never be that perfect. <laughs> but I think that's what I'm going to use for this particular project. So let's go on over to the sewing machine. I have everything set up, okay? All right, and if you follow many of my videos, you know I like to do some test stitching to get my settings the way I want them before I bring in my project. So I am choosing a blanket stitch. And my settings that you'll see me use today are 2.4 with the width and 2.2 on the length. So if you like the look of this stitch and you want to try to use the same stitch, you could start there and you might have to do some adjustments in your sewing machine uh, and tone it in because each machine is different, right? But those are my stitch settings. And the first thing I'm going to do is stitch down the perimeter outside of the body. And then I'll go in and do the wing and the heart and the eye. Now the only thing that I think I might change is when I get to the eye, that piece is a little bit smaller. And I might reduce my blanket stitch when I get to that point. And if so, we'll stop and I'll let you know what those settings are. All right, I really like the length of this stitch. Now all I'm going to do is lower the width of the stitch by one little click. So instead of 2.4 as the width, I'm gonna drop it down to 2.2 as the width and I'm still at 2.2 for the length. Whoops, I took a stitch. <laughs> so 2.2 and 2.2, those are my settings and that's what I'm gonna use for the eye.
there we go there is the eye and that is all of the sewing for this project so let's come back to the pressing board and here she is don't you think she is just the cutest thing ever <laughs> i think she's so so cute i'll just bring in some light so here are my two chickens so far i'm forming my flock of chickens <laughs> And uh, these will be used as trivets for my Thanksgiving table. I hope you have so much fun making these. What do you think? Really simple, right? Yeah, I love that method of hiding a turning underneath of applique like that. I am not good at getting those seams to turn and have a nice smooth little edge in that turning space. So this is right up my alley. And let me just show you what she looks like from the back, right? She's quilted with her wing and her heart and the little eye around her body. You can see her little pieces sticking out like that. Isn't that just super cute? There she is. Okay, y'all. I hope you make some of these. And if you do, I would love to see them. Uh, an easy way to share pictures of your chicken flock with everyone is over on the Creative Crew. So I'm going to post the link to Creative Crew Facebook on down in the description box. I want to see your chickens. Please take pictures and share them with me. And uh, yeah, have fun with this. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. And again, the pattern link is down in the description box. So you can just Click on that and jump right on over to Etsy and start sewing with me today. I'm sorry this was a little bit of a lengthier video, but I hope you did uh, enjoy the short little video updates of our chickens. It was fun to just hang out with them and take some videos of them showing off my babies. <laughs> And you know what? I will see y'all really soon. We're doing the applique series currently here on YouTube each Friday. And uh, there's a whole bunch of videos already up on that. So if this is the first time you're joining me, take a look around on my channel. I do lots of free stuff. And uh, yeah, if you are extremely new to applique, that applique series is a wonderful uh, exercise and introduction into applique. Some of them are easier. Some of them are more intermediate. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Come hang out with us on Fridays. Okay. Bye, everybody. Have fun making the chicken.